being ketogenic is the best foundational fuel system that we have in our body. Having excess ketones may cause some problems. If we are trying to stay in ketosis all the time, that's where we start seeing some of these things that people are noticing clinically. What's going on guys? Coach Bronson here. This is going to be a crazy video because you may learn something about keto that you didn't know before. You may learn that ketosis is not what you thought it was and that it's possible that not being in ketosis is better for your long-term sustainability than being in it. There's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of discussion about high fat, high protein. We need carbs to do keto, but we also don't need carbs to live and be, and be thriving and be healthy because carbs are what make us sick. A lot of conflicting information. Before we get into that, I want to make sure that you subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Make sure that you click the bell so you're notified every time I come out in the video. But most importantly, please share this information with somebody. If you find it useful, somebody you know will find it useful. So let's get into it. Before we do that, I want to make sure that we understand the difference between ketosis and being ketogenic. Being ketogenic is when your body is primarily using fatty acids, converting them into ketones, and then using ketones for fuel. Being ketogenic is when your body has become efficient at converting fatty acids into ketones for fuel, not relying on glucose. We become ketogenic when we reduce our carb intake. Being ketogenic provides more energy per gram of fuel. It's less inflammatory in our system. And it provides a whole bunch of other benefits from a hormone perspective, just bodily function, metabolic function. The mitochondria perform better when they are ketogenic, when fat is a primary source of fuel. It's just everything is better in our bodies when we are fat burners. If everything works better when we're ketogenic, then why is being keto a problem? This is where there's a lot of confusion. Understanding the words can solve most of the problems of most of the discussion. Ketosis means that we have an overabundance of ketones in the blood. That's where we get into a problem. Now, here's the issue. Being ketogenic is how we are born. Being ketogenic is the best foundational fuel system that we have in our body. Having excess ketones may cause some problems. Once we have become fat adapted, we can run into problems. If we are trying to stay in ketosis all the time, that's where we start seeing some of these things that people are noticing clinically. That means they're seeing it happen in people that they are working with and they are identifying it as a problem that is repeatable and happens over and over and over again. There's five main things that I've seen. Low thyroid hormones, T3 issues, um, increased cortisol, higher inflammation and potential issues with blood glucose again. Even though we're keeping our sugar down, if our cortisol is going up, cortisol triggers glucose production. Hey there, I wanted to let you know about my latest book, Body Confident, that's coming out in September 2024. Call it a critical thinking guide to your health journey because it is a framework, a guide, a blueprint that's going to help you understand and be able to filter all the information that's out there on the internet that you're getting from social media, YouTube, go to bodyconfidentbook.com. If you are specifically trying to maintain ketosis and be in ketosis all the time, and you're eating higher fat and keeping your protein down because you don't want your protein to trigger your insulin, it's a problem with having high ketones with low insulin. And that's where we get into the idea that we need carbs to fix this problem. It's not just the combination of high ketones in the blood that being in ketosis long-term is the problem. It's that being in ketosis kind of by definition means that our insulin is always low. If we're never triggering glucose, if we never had glucose in the system that we have to respond to, then we never spike our insulin. We need insulin to do a lot of things. Hormones need insulin in order to be created. We need to stop being afraid of insulin. Chronic health issues are not because of insulin. Chronic health issues are because we have been triggering insulin abnormally. And we've been doing things outside of what insulin needs to do. Being in ketosis and trying to keep our insulin low is the opposite extreme of the same thing. What's better, high fat or high protein? My response is neither. You need 
adequate protein to provide your body with the metabolic substrates that it needs to perform and be healthy. And you need adequate fat to provide your body with the fuel. You need protein and fat based on what your body needs. How much do you need? Because you need them both. When you're eating a meal, it needs to have adequate protein and adequate fat. Here's the biggest reason why. Because the fat and the protein combined is what allows your body to respond to the food you're eating and kick in insulin. You have something called GLP-1. GLP-1 responds to fat in your mouth, in your, in your upper digestive tract, in your stomach, essentially, and starts the process of producing insulin. When protein hits your lower intestine, that's where it kicks in the secondary response for insulin. The initial response up here in your gut, in your stomach, and then the second response in your intestines combined is where you get that initial kick of insulin, and then you get that long, slow kick of insulin. The two of those combined is where we need to have, they, they work in synergy, they work together. If we have a little bit of fat, that's great, but it doesn't do anything for us to have all the benefits of breaking ketosis and having insulin in our system to let it do what it needs to do. We need that initial GLP-1 phase one. We need that secondary GLP-1 phase two response from protein. Here's another thing to keep in mind. Nutrients are in protein. Fat allows those nutrients into our body. If we're just eating fat, we're getting fuel with no nutrition. If we're just eating protein, we're getting nutrition, but it can't be absorbed by our body as well. There's a lot of uh, discussion about high fat, high protein. We need to break ketosis. We need a carb cycle. There are three ways to break ketosis. Breaking ketosis does not mean you are no longer ketogenic. It just means you don't have extra ketones in your blood. You can eat some carbs. You can eat some protein combined with fat. You can eat just protein and that's going to work. So carbs, protein plus fat, you can exercise, exercise to manage my nutrition. Holy cannoli. Let's talk about carbs first. Carbs are probably the easiest way. This is for me personally. I find it confusing to tell people that carbs are not essential, that you don't need carbs to survive and thrive and be healthy and that you should reduce your carbs. My standard when I work with people, I usually kind of try to get them to 25 grams of carbs or less. I mean, I don't force that if someone says, hey, I really want to do 50 grams. Okay, great. Let's work with 50 grams. But most people that I work with are usually 25 grams of carbs or less. So if we have to remove carbs in order to get healthy, then how do I then go back to those same people and say, but in order to really do keto the right way, you need to have some carbs. If you're not focused on the right thing, if you're focused just on fat loss and you're trying to keep your ketones high and you're not getting the protein that you need, I'm only going to increase my carbs from 25 grams a day to 50 grams a day for two or three days a week. So I can break ketosis two or three days a week. I would be thinking of every other way possible that we can break ketosis without having someone eat carbs, particularly most of the people that I work with because carbs are triggering. Now, is there a way that you could do it that may not be triggering? Sure. You can go out and get some fast digesting, fast acting carb powder that doesn't have any flavor, mix it in your water and you slam it down. That You could do that. We could go even a better route and do some fat and protein combined. Eat a steak. That's another way that you can break ketosis. If you didn't know this, protein has an insulin response just like carbs do. If you eat protein, your insulin will rise. I used to think that it was just protein, that you could eat protein by itself and your insulin will rise. And that will happen. Here's the problem. Lean protein without fat in high quantities or for an extended period of time will blunt your insulin response. So you can break ketosis every single day by doing exercise. You know what else you can do by doing exercise? You can increase your lean mass. You can increase your glycogen storage without having to worry about it going to fat. Because when you have more muscle, you can store more glycogen. Your body will convert that glycogen into fat because now it's storing it in your muscle. Hey there, did you know that I have a free community on Discord? If you go to discord.coachbronson.com, you can join my community. You can meet other people. You can engage in a group of individuals who are all searching for and having success in finding their context and the solutions that will work best for them. Hop yourself in there, discord.coachbronson.com. See you soon.